In this project, we will build our own electronic candle with a nice realistic flicker. Hi, my name is Jens and I believe that everybody can learn electronics. It's winter, it's getting cold outside, so let's build an electronic candle to get warmed up again. Here you can see a real candle and an electronic candle side by side. How does the electronic candle do that? Actually, these things are quite ingenious. When you take it apart, you can see that they only contain a special LED that has a built-in flickering control. So I thought for this project it would be fun to try and recreate an electronic candle using a microcontroller. Here's what we need. A 170 pin breadboard, a battery compartment with a built-in switch, three AA 1.5 volts batteries, two LEDs of your choice, I recommend orange and yellow, two 220 ohms resistors, the PIC16F 1455 microcontroller, and some single stranded wire. I find that American wire gauge 24 or 0.6 millimeters work well. You also need the PIC Kit 3 to flash the hex file onto the PIC microcontroller. If those words have little to no meaning to you, that's all right, we have an introductory video on PIC microcontroller basics. With that out of the way, let's have a look at the schematic. As you can see, it is quite simple. The PIC16F1455 is connected to our 4.5 volt battery pack via a simple on-off switch. In our case, that switch is already included in the battery pack. The anodes of our two LEDs are connected to ports RC5 and RC3, their cathodes to a 220 ohms resistor, and the resistors are connected to ground. This funny symbol here is a so-called jumper. You can either leave it open like this, or you can close it and thereby connect port RA5 to ground. When the jumper is closed, the flickering animation speed will be set to high. And if it is left unconnected, the flickering animation speed will be slower. What about those four wires here that don't really go anywhere? They are connected to the PIC16F1455's analog to digital converter channels. And we will use them to create random numbers for the candle flickering animation. So we need to create a random number on a fully deterministic microcontroller. One way to do this is to use the noise on the ADC channels. When you switch on your voltmeter and leave it disconnected, the lowest digits always fluctuate a little bit, right? and we cannot really predict how they fluctuate. We can use the same idea on a microcontroller to create a random number. An analog to digital converter or ADC for short, takes an analog voltage and converts it into a number. In our case, the PIC16F1455 comes with a 10-bit ADC module that can convert a voltage between zero and five volts to a number between zero and 1023. Our microcontroller has several ADC inputs. If we leave them floating, their values are close to zero and their converted values will also be close to zero. If we take these random fluctuations, we can combine them to form a random number. That's the main idea. Now we have a random number and we want to use that to vary the brightness of an LED in a random flickery way. Microcontroller outputs are digital outputs, meaning they can only ever be one or zero. If you connect an LED to them, the LED will be on or off. But how can we set the brightness to say 50%? One solution is pulse width modulation or PWM. It can be used to control the brightness of an LED by switching it on and off very rapidly, typically a few thousand times per second. The green line is the PWM signal. As you can see, it is only ever one or zero. Our eyes are too slow to notice that and instead perceive an average brightness that can be anything from completely off to completely on. This here is what we call the PWM period. The ratio of on time divided by the PWM period is called duty cycle or DC for short. 
and it is always a value between 0% and 100%. Our PIC16F1455 has two built-in PWM modules and you can learn all about them in the companion article. Each module has a resolution of 10 bit, meaning that the duty cycle can be set to a value between 0 and 1023. We can combine all of these ideas into a program. That program is then compiled into a so-called hex file and we can use the PICKIT3 to flash it onto the PIC16F1455. All these steps are explained in great detail in the companion article as well. After we have flashed the hex file onto the PIC16F1455, we can build the candle circuit. First, place the 170 pin breadboard in front of you and place the PIC16F1455 in the top row. Make sure that the notch points up. The pins are labeled counterclockwise from 1 on the top left to 7 on the bottom left to 8 on the bottom right and 14 on the top right. Next, place the two resistors on the breadboard like this. Because pin 14 will later be connected to ground, we can use the right row here as our ground power rail. In the schematic, look at the right, these connections correspond to that blue part right here. If you want to close the jumper JP1, you can now do that. Simply connect RA5, pin 2 of the PIC16F1455, to the VSS connection at pin 14. Now you can connect LED2. Its anode gets connected with RC3 pin 7 and you can connect its cathode with one of the two resistors. I bend the leads of the LEDs so that they will fit nicely. Now we are ready for LED1 and we will mount it above LED2 to create the illusion of a flame. Its anode is connected to RC5 pin 5 and its cathode gets connected to the remaining resistor. Why did we first connect LED2 and then LED1? Well, my orange LED has longer wires and that's why I placed it second. It just works better with this breadboard layout. But when you are building this yourself, you can of course do it in any way you like. All that remains is to connect the 4.5 volt battery pack. The positive red cable has to be connected to pin 1 VDD and the black negative terminal goes into our ground rail on the right side, like that. Now we can switch our candle on and enjoy the show. And that's it, you did it! I decided against an enclosure for this project because it depends a lot on your personal taste. But because this project is so small, you can also fit it into winter decoration, dollhouses or anywhere else where you would need to mimic the flame of a candle. I hope you enjoyed this project. Don't forget that there's also a companion article with lots of additional details and other interesting projects for you to check out. Thank you so much for watching, for taking the time and I'll see you next time.